Hi, this is Steve White with Remax Equity Group Realtors, and today I'm here with Haley Norwood with Delap. And there are so many misconceptions that are out there in regards to all the tax reform and what this might have in terms of impact in their housing industry. And so I thought I'd Haley come in and give us a quick update in regards to what this might mean for you. Today I'm going to talk to you about some of the areas that are especially misconstrued for homeowners and potential home buyers. Um, and I'm going to talk about four different areas that the tax reform impacted. I'm going to start today by talking about the interest deduction. It used to be that you could deduct interest on a million dollars worth of acquisition indebtedness and that threshold dropped down to $750,000. So what happens with people that already had a mortgage and they already have a million dollars worth of indebtedness? there is a grandfather clause. So basically if you were at a million dollars and you're coming into 2018, no worries. You're still gonna be able to deduct that, the full interest amount on your million dollar home. So that's fantastic for them. <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely, definitely. And e that, that applies even if you choose to refinance. Oh, I would great. still check into it, talk to a CPA about it. So I've heard, uh, Haley, that there's a lot of limitations on tax deductions that people can have. The new 2018 law puts a restriction on how many taxes paid you can deduct on your return. This is something totally separate from the interest deduction. It used to be that all of the state taxes that you paid, all of your local taxes, and that includes Multnomah County, um, your Portland city taxes, all of those were fully deductible on your tax return, your 1040. Um, now that, that amount, your, your state taxes, your local taxes, your real estate taxes, your taxes paid are limited to $10,000. You can only deduct $10,000. This is super impactful for, for people that are looking to add real estate taxes to the mix. If you're already at the $10,000 threshold for state and local taxes, you want to get in touch with your CPA and you want to get in touch with Steve and you, you want to understand what kind of real estate taxes you're going to be adding on and just make sure that you're really clear on wh what amounts you're going to be able to deduct because it's super important for your planning. So hey, let's talk about um, moving expenses. Okay. You used to be able to deduct your moving expenses if you were going to move 50 miles away. I totally understand that if you're living in Bend and you're going to take a big promotion in Portland, this deduction isn't going to change your mind. And I don't expect it to. My intention is just to make sure that you're aware that that deduction does not exist anymore. If you spend $1,000 on a U-Haul to get you from Bend to Portland, it's not deductible. And if, in fact, your employer chooses to reimburse you, you have to pick that part up as income too. So Haley, let's talk about home equity lines of credit because I've got a lot of customers that use them and they use it as um, financial flexibility. So wh what does that mean to people? The new tax bill restricted deductibility of your interest on a home equity line of credit. And it's not like the other interest deduction where you could grandfather in a little bit. This is totally um, your cutoff. You can't, you can't deduct it. So if you currently have a home equity line of credit taken out and we're expecting to receive some tax savings from that, there, there will be no more benefit from that. So Haley, um, give us some hope. Obviously there's a lot of intense and uh, deep things. So give us an upside. I realize I've talked quite a bit about um, limitations on your deductions for homeowners, people looking to purchase homes, but I want to make it super clear that I realize all of you are more than just homeowners and you're more than just people looking for homes. You have W-2 wages or you own a business. And there's a lot more to, to it and there's a lot more tax implications for all these different things and all of it plays into the big picture. So actually last week I was taking a look at an article that was in the Oregonian by Mike Rogaway. He took a look at what the state is expecting this to impact the average taxpayer. And it looks like about 70% of tax filers are going to see a reduction in their overall tax liability coming for the 2018 tax year, which is huge. And they're expecting 10% to go up um, in the state of Oregon. And you know, the rest will probably stay around the same. But in the big picture, we're expecting taxpayers to save about $1.5 billion in Oregon this year. And that averages out to about $840 per taxpayer. So um, my father for years was the managing partner of DeLap. And so I have a huge fondness with this organization. 
and we just wanted to quick kind of summarize what are the services that Delap does. So you guys do corporate returns, you do personal returns, what are the other kind of things that... All of the above. Um, we do have a big focus on entity returns, but we are happy to prepare your personal return. Um, we also provide consulting, assurance, and wealth advisory services. So thank you so much for all the, the wealth of information that you've given to us and for all of my customers, and we greatly appreciate it. Thank You're you. You're so welcome.